content, um, teaching approach, um, the expectations of students. Yeah. Uh, so let me talk about each of those. There's, um, I started, as you rightly said, here as a, my first MBA class was in 1996. So perhaps you weren't even born then, but uh, it uh, was, uh, the focus was on how do you get businesses to make more money, to uh, uh, sell more, to you know, create wealth for shareholders and so on. And to some extent that remains, um, but there's a much greater interest now, uh, especially driven by companies, by employers, and especially by uh, young people today, uh, our MBA students today. Um, and that focuses on the role of business in creating a better world. Yeah, so the role of business in doing good. Some that businesses have traditionally done, but just have not focused on as much, uh, like employing others, yeah, creating jobs for people or uh, offering products and services that are good for humanity. These businesses, much of the progress we've seen in the world that one can attribute to um, actions on the part of individual business people. What we see now is a much more conscious and somewhat critical look at the role of business in engaging in actions that are good for the world. So that's on the, um, on the, content front. The other part that's changed is how we teach. So, um, you know, there are lectures, there are case studies, all of that. Increasingly, my own teaching, and the more broadly uh, that of my colleagues, has focused on experiential teaching. Huge. Uh, um, you are the generation that is global. Uh, you are the I left India in 1990. Uh, it was, you know, on my passport, I had a stamp saying I was allowed 1,000 something, 346 dollars, something like that. Uh, India was closed. Everything required a license and uh, going abroad was like a big deal. Um, you, even while sitting here in Delhi, you can connect with people outside, just as my students can connect with people in Africa. Um, but if you were to go on an international exchange program, you, and depending on where you go, you realize just the diversity that exists uh, across how people um, think differently, how their assumptions are different, how their educational backgrounds, even though you come from uh, elite respective institutions, uh, how you learned was different. The expectations of class are different. Now attendance, I will say, in most places these days, uh, especially after COVID where people were skipping out uh, in very creative ways of, of doing so, uh, will remain the same. Certain things will be similar, others will be different, and will give you perspective. Uh, um, exposure. And so I've done some research on the impact of studying abroad uh, on the part uh, for Indian business leaders. So basically, you know, when India liberalized, there were some Indian business leaders who had worked and studied abroad and others who had not. And we look at their companies and the extent to which they grew abroad. And what we show is, for example, the companies where Indian uh, business leaders had worked abroad or studied abroad were much more likely to expand abroad. 